Welcome to the Young Crones Cafe, where you can get a magic brew full of all sorts of information, both witchy and practical. Grab a cup of coffee and join us. I'm Elizabeth, a wordsmith. And I'm Dave, a modern-day sage. We are going to talk about various witchcraft and life topics from a slightly more mature perspective, at least most of the time. Thanks for joining us. On the path, which is the name for our personal witchcraft practices, we have spent a great deal of time discussing what we believe and why. These conversations led to the writing of a book full of information about our tradition. We call these beliefs metaphysical kernels of thought because they are the start of much, much bigger ideas. We thought we would share some of these with you. So, today's metaphysical kernel of thought is faith. Faith in the validity of ritual effectiveness of using that of magic is needed in order for magic to work and change to happen for a practitioner. It also requires what the path has come to call the act of suspension of disbelief. Disbelief in magic starts for most of us as children. We are told that magic isn't real, that we need to grow up and focus on the mundane world of school, work, and become mature, responsible, and productive adults. Our natural interactions with the magic around us is forgotten or dismissed as childish or unrealistic. However, being able to enter a transcendent state during the working portion of a ritual is vital because this state is where personal change begins to occur. It is the height of ritual experience and makes it possible for us to truly understand the mysteries and joy of magic. The knowledge we gain at the beginning of our practice about what to do in ritual or how to cast spells can create what we term intellectual belief. Intellectual belief is based on knowledge without experience or practice. In other words, you may have figured out what to do for performing ritual or generating a spell, but you haven't actually done anything about it yet. At some point, you reach maximum information before you have to actually do something to progress further along your path. You perform a small ritual or a simple spell and experience success. Your spell works, or you feel something unexplained during ritual. This begins to increase your faith in the efficacy of magic and that ritual experience is going to be something positive in your life. The repetition of these experiences increases your belief in the process and the experience itself. In other words, you cast a small spell and it works. Your intellectual belief becomes that more intuitive faith in your magical abilities, which increase and you grow willing to try a more complicated spell. Your faith continues to grow with repetition of experiences, whether they work out as you planned or with the experience of the totally unexpected results. Faith, therefore, is active suspension of disbelief through doing and not just thinking. It is created by practice, the actual doing of witchcraft in all its many forms. It is that growth from intellectual belief to knowing deep within your soul that you are creating spiritual changes in your own life. I mean, faith, I think, gets a bad rap sometimes because it's associated with the monotheistic religions. If you have faith in God, all will be wonderful kind of thing. I've got to tell you, coming from the background that I came from or the experience base, I guess I should say, the the moment that I saw that today's discussion was going to be on faith to me when i hear that word the the connotation and the baggage and the stuff behind it immediately sort of makes me a little bit uncomfortable so i'm I'm glad we're having a chance to talk about what faith really means in relation to the path i think so to us it's that active suspension for want of a better word like putting it aside that disbelief that we generate in magic just because of the society we live in I mean, when you're a little kid, everything's magic. And you're connected to that. And just growing up, you go to school and you start learning about science, which in itself can be magic, but we don't get taught it that way. Or your parents say you got to grow up and focus on being that responsible and productive adult you're supposed to grow into be. So all of that stuff gets shoved to the the side and we create that disbelief for ourselves. I mean, if you look up at the meaning of disbelief, it's a mental rejection of something as not being real or true, which is a right. So we literally have to create or recreate, I guess, or we discover that belief in magic that's down in there somewhere. That, 
that just resonates so much with uh, with a conversation I was having having with somebody um, yesterday. In fact, um, I believe that we are most perfect when we are newborn. Um, I believe we are born with an amazing set of skills, and that throughout the course of our childhood, especially being raised in a Western or worse yet, American cultures, we are consistently and systematically taught what is not real when we know better. Yeah. You know, when you when you say to your five year old who just said, I saw a ghost, when you say ghosts aren't real and you must have seen something else or it must be something wrong with your sensory ability, that child knows better. You can see it in their eyes. And I can remember being a child and saying, you know, in my head, no, don't tell me I didn't see that because I know that I did. Exactly. So the whole idea of recreating those abilities or those perceptions that we have just sort of closed doors and been taught to be suppressive with. I, I like the idea that, that you brought up of reinventing some of that suspension of disbelief as it, as, as it applies to moving forward and learning a new path or a new tradition. And I think when we first find witchcraft, the whole idea of it, it, it sort of sparks something for those of us who follow this kind of path. And it seems to me when I talk to people, their first experience is they read everything they can get their hands on about it. Because we're that kind of person. We just are attracted to information. And you reach that point of information overload. You've read 87 different ways to do a ritual. You have read all sorts of spells or how to write spells, how to do spells. And you have to actually say, okay, it's fish or cup bait. I have to do something, which I think is why you call it the practice of witchcraft. Absolutely, I agree with that. It is a doing, and you light a candle for have a little ritual. Now, maybe nothing happens, and that's often the case, but you feel better because you did something. Or Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interject here. My suspension of disbelief tells me that something did happen. It's just a matter of whether or not you were able to notice the effect that your working had. Exactly. That's what. That's more. That's a better way to put it. But you do things, and you you do a little a little simple spell, and it works for whatever reason. You may not know why, but it, it something happened, and you notice it. For one of a better word, you start paying attention, and you go to ritual, and you have you something unexpected happens to your feelings or your thought process or whatever. So you are willing to try it again. And that, in, in essence, is stepping out in faith. You may not know what's going on, but something cool is happening. And it resonates with you. So you do more stuff. And that little bit of faith grows. And all of a sudden, things are magical. They all you, remember, you, but you've got it back. You just took me right back to one of the first pagan experience memories uh, that I can remember. I was at a drum circle, just a bunch of people sitting around a, a campfire, and, uh, various states of inebriation and various states of quality rhythm. But you get this nice tribal thing going. And I was just there as a visitor. And uh, the, the person that had brought me there said, just take a few minutes and walk around the outside of the circle and don't talk to anybody don't engage with anybody just walk around and feel the energy as they were playing mm -hmm. and probably after the second or third time around the circle and it was pretty good size there's probably 30 or 40 people there i can remember feeling i don't know what this is i don't know what's going on over there but by god something is definitely going on over there. And that was the moment that I realized what I don't know. And it got me that moment of being hungry again to learn, okay, what things can I see? Now that I'm ready to not follow the limitations that my culture has put on me, 
Now, at this point, all right, I have new eyes, new ears. What do I see going on over there by the fire? And I can stand outside that circle and look at that and marvel at that all I want. But then the do moment is when I step within that circle and I engage with that energy and I could physically feel the hairs on my my arms stand up and whatnot. And so there was enough sensory data coming in for me to be able to say, yeah, I don't know what this is, but by God, I'm standing in something. And yeah. that was that was one of the earliest ritual memories that I that I have, and I just wanted to share that. Oh yeah, that that's it exactly. It's things happen in ritual that we can't explain, and that that disbelief gets butted up against something's happening, and it doesn't match all the quote unquote reality stuff that I know. Sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, I I stood there as a pretty much as an agnostic, secular physicist, science student saying, man, I don't know what this is, but I can't say that there's nothing happening. Yeah, exactly. Your 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 actual experience does not match all of that intellectual stuff. Right, right. And then as soon as I stepped in and engaged with it, I, I love the way you reminded me that that, in fact, is the root of practice, is taking that step forward. Yeah, and do it. Um, I was describing to somebody here a few days ago, and, and it may have even been you, um, but during this process of um, adjusting to life with Susie over my shoulder instead of in my hand, um, during this process, there have been some points during my grieving where I have had a problem come up and I just keep putting my foot forward and like one of the movies does with special effects, I forget which, but the tiles were literally appearing under my feet. And what I found was I was learning again to have a daily practice of taking my foot and setting it out there where there is no tile and believing that it will be there to support me. Yeah. And when I had that thought and that experience, I also had three or four days right in a row where things just fell into place. Solutions just sort of popped up from nowhere. And I kept putting my foot out over that thin air and there was solid ground every time. And I had, like I say, a stretch of three or four days where I felt magical. I guess that's the only the only way that I can express that um, in language is I was so not in my intellect. I was so in my energy. Does that I, make sense? Yeah, it does, actually, because it, it, it all comes back to we have to turn that rational brain off sometimes because that rational brain will come up with all the reasons we can't fix it. We shouldn't do it. I mean, that's what our rational brain is supposed to do. It's yeah, my, my, my monkey pattern matching problem solving evolutionary miracle is at present in my way. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part of what the doing of ritual, the, the casting a spell is designed to do in its own way. It's to remind us that there are things we don't have the answers to that work. If you sure. can say, yes, I'm going to accept that this is also reality, that magic is real, that if I light this candle and I say whatever it is I need to say and know that I can change things, something will happen. The change may not match what I think is going to happen, because that's a big part of witchcraft is we end up with some very unexpected results sometimes. In <laughs> we start out thinking we're going from A to C and we're at Q. You know, how that happened, of, it's equally valid. One of the things that I never expected before I worked in a metaphysical store, and now I find so adorable because I work in a metaphysical store, is probably one in 10 people will come in and say, so I lit this candle and I did this and, oh, my God, what have I done? What is going on? Because now this has happened and this has happened and this has happened. And people are intellectually freaking out over yeah. something that they have done magically. And I remind them that when you're in that magical state, you can't do things 